Welcome to TKC, whether you're joining us online or in person here at Temple Kilath Chaim. It is Shabbat, so we're gathered here to worship, to celebrate together. And of course, in just a little while, Morgan Zakai will be called to the Torah for the very first time as a bat mitzvah. So definitely something to celebrate this morning uh, as we come together for this very joyous simcha, this special celebration, this joyous occasion. We are going to begin our service today with Morgan's parents, James and Marla, presenting her with her talit. So, uh, Marla, James, you're welcome to come on up. A talit is what I am wearing right now, and Morgan, you're welcome to come on up also. Talit is what I'm wearing right now. The special part about it are the tzitzit, these little fringes on the corner. The idea is that by looking at them, uh, we are reminded of the sacred obligations that are upon every adult Jew. So by becoming a bat mitzvah, Morgan is now accepting some of these responsibilities, all these responsibilities. They include things like honoring your parents, coming to synagogue, but also improving our community and helping to make it a better place. Uh, the palit that Morgan is being presented with is a very special one. It belonged to her uncle, uh, her uncle Michael, for whom she is named after. His Hebrew name was Meir Leib, and her Hebrew name is Meira Leiba. So her uncle's talit for whom she is named after. Morgan, if you would, uh, lead us in the blessing, and then afterwards, uh, you can go ahead and place it on your shoulders. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kitshanu B'mitzvotah V'tivanu, Lahita Tef Batsitzi. Amen. We're going to continue now with a reading uh, from David Zakheim, who is joining us online. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Very clearly. Good. Okay. So, the soul that you have given me, O oh God, is pure. You created and formed it, breathed it into me, and within me you sustain it. So long as I have breath, therefore, I will give thanks to you, my God and the God of all ages, source of all being, loving guide of every human spirit. Thank you. We'll continue now with the blessing over tour study. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam, 
Asher kitchana be mitzvotav vitzivanu la asok bidivre Torah. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, who hallows us with mitzvot, commanding us to engage with words of Torah. And our next reading will be led for us by Jenny Lay. Jenny, are you with us? Okay, we'll continue reading together. Please join with me. These are things that are limitless, of which a... These are the things that are limitless, of which a person enjoys the fruit of the world, while the principle remains in the world to come. They are honoring one's father and mother, engaging in deeds of compassion, arriving early for study, morning and evening, dealing graciously with guests, visiting the sick, providing for the wedding couple, accompanying the dead for burial, being devoted in prayer, and making peace among people. But the study of Torah encompasses them all. Please rise as we continue with the Barhu. <laughs> Are you listening to my prayer? Can you hear my voice? Can you understand? Am I awake? Am I prepared? Barehu et Adonai ha-mevorach Baruch Adonai ha-mevorach Le'olam va'ed Le'olam va'ed Ya-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-
and please join with me. Standing on the parted shores of history, I still believe what we were taught before ever we stood at Sinai's foot, that wherever we go, it is eternally Egypt, that there is a better place, a promised land, that the winding way to that promise passes through the wilderness, that there is no way to get from here to there except by joining hands, marching together. We continue now with our song for freedom, Micha Mocha, which the Israelites first sang, leaving slavery in Egypt on their way to the promised land. We continue to sing it today as we celebrate freedom. Who is like you, Adonai? Who is like you? Adonai la 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 Mi chamocha b'ayli madonai, mi chamocha edar b'kodesh. No ratehi lot o sefele, no ratehi lot o sefele. Please rise. Adonai sefatai tiftach ufi agite hilatecha. Adonai, open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu velohe avotenu v'imotenu. Elohe Avraham, Elohe Itach, Velohe Akov. Elohe Sarah, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rahel, Velohe Lea, Ha El Hagadol Hagibor Vahanora, El El Yom, Gomel Hasidim Tovim, Vichone Hako, Vizohar Stea Vot Vimaho, Umi Vig Ule La Livne Venehem, Shema Abocha Bahava, Mela Zer Mushia Magain. Barakata Adonai, Magain Avraham, Bezrat Sarah. Atagi Borla Olam Adonai, Michaia Kolata, Rav Lichoshia, Morid Hatao. Michal Kel Chaim Behetze, Michaia Hako Berachami Rabin, So Mech Noflim Berfe Holim. Um atir asurim, um kayem, um unatovi, shene afa, micha mocha baal givuro, um ito melach, melech mimit, um kayem, um mat mi eshua, vene emana ta lecha kayot hako, barukata adonai, mechaye hako. Return to your seat. I thought they cleaned the gutters. They did. Oh. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> we continue now with silent prayer. Is that too cold for you, Rebecca? I'm so considerate. Is that at the bottom? Jumans. I don't know which Jumans they are. Harold. Harold? I don't know who Harold is. Where's her parents? They're not on our screen, but. Oh, you think they're there? I don't know. I mean, on... they could be, could be live there. In... And if you're joining us from home, it's silent prayer, which you can achieve by muting yourself, please. Thank you. Yeah. 
Just a moment, we'll begin our Torah service. This is the highlight of our morning worship service. It's a time when we get to hear the Torah scroll. It's a time when we get to hear other, another biblical reading as well called the Haftarah. This week's uh, Torah portion, the one that Morgan prepared, um, comes from the Torah portion, Truma. And it's about how the ancient Israelites, after they left slavery, in Egypt, and they were in the wilderness, were building a sanctuary for God so that God may dwell amongst them. The Haftarah comes from a different part of the Hebrew Bible, but likewise, it has a very similar theme where King Solomon begins, uh, or we read about the beginning of the construction of the temple in Jerusalem. So it's all about how we build sanctuaries, and Morgan's going to tell us much more about it later on. Uh, not only is it the highlight of the service any given Shabbat, it's particularly uh, noteworthy today because Morgan's going to be reading from the Torah for the very first time uh, in our worship service, in our Shabbat service. She's worked hard to prepare for it. Uh, she's learned a lot. It's not easy to read from a Torah scroll. The Torah scroll is handwritten in ancient Hebrew, which is just consonants, no vowels, no punctuation, goes from right to left, completely different alphabet. You know, it's a foreign language. Um, but she's mastered it. She's done very well in being able to read it for us. We'll all hear. Same thing with the Haftarah. But not only can she just read out of the scroll, impressive though it is, that's not everything. It's also about what lessons can we take from it. What does reading about a construction of a sanctuary thousands of years ago have to teach us today? Why is it still relevant? Morgan's been thinking about this. She's uh, prepared uh, what's called a Devar Torah, a word of Torah, a speech, uh, a sermon, a, a lesson for the rest of us. Um, so in this way, not only is she reading Torah and Haftarah, but she's really going to be our teacher today. And we're going to be her students. And in the Jewish tradition, there's perhaps no greater honor than that of being a teacher. So now that she is a bat mitzvah, um, she's also going to be our teacher today. So we're going to continue with the Torah service. Um, we're going to begin um, by taking out the scroll and symbolically passing it down. For that, I'd like to invite forward both our ARC openers and members of her family. Our ARC openers are Susan Phillips and Kathy Starr. And the, uh, from, for passing the Torah scroll down from one generation to another, Morgan, it's of course you, uh, your parents, Marla and James, and your grandparents, your nanny ma and poppy as well. If you'll join us on the Bema, please, if everyone else would please rise as we continue. <laughs> The hard cold show. Ki, 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 shadonai Elohe nu rame mu. Ki, 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 shadonai Elohe nu rame mu. Rame mu, Elohe nu The hard cold show. Rame mu, Adonai Elohe nu vehishtachavu. The hard cold show. So, 
we're going to be passing down the Torah scroll from Morgan's grandparents to her parents to Morgan herself. It's symbolically representing the chain of transmission, how Torah has been passed down from one generation to the next, all the way until today. This particular scroll that we're using to symbolically pass it down is the oldest Torah scroll that we have. It was written around the year 1780, making it nine years older than the United States Constitution. This Torah scroll belonged to a Jewish community outside of Prague in the town called Byzance. Sadly, the Jewish community there was destroyed in World War II and the Holocaust. Not much is left of it, but this is one of the remnants from that community. There's very few scrolls like this particular one from that community in the world. I think there's eight. We are the custodians of this. We take care of it. And this is the scroll that's going to be passed down to Morgan. Her job is twofold. One, it is to receive it. And second, it is to pass it on. And that's what she's going to be doing. Baruch Shenatan Torah Torah Baruch Shenatan Torah Torah Le'amo Yisrael Bikdu Shato Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Echad Eloheinu Gadol Adonai Ashlo shah devarim, Ashlo shah devarim, ha olam omed, Ashlo shah devarim, ha olam, ha olam omed. Al ha Torah ve al ha avoda ve al gimilut hasadim. Al ha Torah ve al ha avoda ve al gimilut hasadim. Ashlo sha devarim, ashlo sha devarim, ashlo sha ashlo sha devarim. Ha olam ha olam omed. Okay, so we have two aliyot today. That means the reading is going to be divided into two sections, into half. Before we read from the Torah, it's customary, it's obligatory, to recite the blessing. The blessing acknowledges that what Morgan is doing is a religious act, a special significant act. It's a mitzvah. For the first reading, the blessings before and after that will be recited by her parents, Marla and James. Even though Morgan's doing the heavy lifting, she's doing the reading of the scroll itself, since her parents are doing the blessing, what that means is technically her parents are taking responsibility for this very first reading. It's very similar to how any child might do something, and even though they're doing it, ultimately it's the parents' responsibility. The second aliyah, the final aliyah, Morgan, of course, will still be reading, but she will also be reciting the blessing before and after, which means, which shows that responsibility passing from her parents to her as well. So inviting up um, Marla and James formally to the Torah for the aliyah, Ya'am do. Malka Chava Yaakov Ben David Harishon. Barachu et Adonai Hamvarach. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Leolam Baed. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam. Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Haamim. 
Benantamanu et Torato, Baruch Atadonai, Notain Haturah. And Amen. Vasili Mikdash, Vishokhanti Bitocham, Keho Asher Ani. Mar e otcha e tavni koke lav, vachain tasu, vasili mikdash, vishokhanti pitocham, keho asher ani, mar e otcha e tavni koke. I messed up. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I thought you Okay. Amen. Vasili Mikdash, Vishokhanti Bitocham, Keho Asher Ani, Mar E Otcha, E Tavni, Koke Lav, Hamishka, E Tavni, Koke Lav, Vachent Asu, Vasu Aron Ate, Shitim, Amatim Vachiti, Arko. Vama Vahiti Rochbo, Vama Vahiti Komato. Rocha Ta and I, Elohim Melech Olam, Ashi Nantamanu Torah and Met, the Haye Olam Nata Bitohainu, Rocha Ta Adonai, no Tain Hatora. Amen. Okay. That's okay, we'll find the spot. <laughs> okay, so we are now halfway through our Torah reading, and right before Morgan is going to be called formally to the Torah as a bat mitzvah, her parents are going to offer her a blessing. In some synagogues, the blessing goes is less about the child and more about the parents, where they thank God for freeing them from all the responsibilities that they have over the child. And it's like laying down a heavy burden, you can imagine, <laughs> saying, no longer am I responsible for this one over here. Thank God. So it belongs in the house of worship, of course. Here we do things a little differently. Um, this is going to be a blessing, uh, of course, blessing God, but also a blessing from Marla and James to their daughter, Morgan words of blessing from her parents will be the last thing she hears that we all hear before I formally invite her to the Torah as a bat mitzvah. Our hearts, Our hearts are, are one, one on this joyous day, day as you commit, commit yourself to a life of Torah, a life we pray filled with wisdom, caring, and right action. We pray, we pray that, that you will grow each day in compassion for the needy, in concern, concern for the stranger, in love for all people. May the one who blessed our ancestors, Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebecca, Jacob and Rachel and Leah, bless you on becoming a bat mitzvah. May you grow with strength and courage with vision and sensitivity, and may you always be certain of our love. Amen. 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 Ta'amod. Hakala habat mitzvah, me'era leba bat Yaakov, v'malka chava hashenit. Baruch Adonai hamborach. Baruch leolam ba'en. Baruch ata Adonai. Baruch Adonai hamborach leolam ba'en. Baruch ata Adonai. Eloheinu melech haolam. Asher bat harbani mikoha amin. Venatan lanu 
Yes, for a tobler, frata, I don't know, pain, hot, Amen. Bitty pita, o toes, a half, a whore. Me biting me hoots, tits a penny, the asita, a love. There's a half, saviv, the atta love. Our bata about the half. Vena ta ta, all our bathroom are tough. Ush te taba oh, also oh, echa, ush te taba oh, also oh, hashini. This versita va day at say she team. Pitsy pita o tom zaha. Barukata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Natan Lanu Torat Emet Vichaye Olam Nota Betochenu Barukata Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen And Yasher Koach, which means may your strength continue and increase as you go, although it's just a fancy way of saying job well done. Um, excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay. Time that, an exciting time, something that we've been looking forward to when that time finally arrives. Um, there's a blessing to be said for that, where we thank God for giving us life, for sustaining us, and for bringing us to this time and to this season. Of course, I, I should say, with the past year and the pandemic and not knowing exactly when this might happen and when this might occur, um, all the more so is this blessing um, appropriate and just right for the occasion. So please join in as we sing the Shehechianu blessing. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shehechianu V'kimanu V'higianu Hazman Hazeh Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shechecheyanu V'kimanu V'higianu Bazman Hazeh Ah Ah Amen. Marla James, you're welcome to return to your seat. We'll continue now with the translation of the Torah reading. And let them make a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Exactly as I show you the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all its furnishings, so you shall make it. The they may, shall make an ark of acacia wood, two and a half cubics long, a, half in, a, a cubic and a half wide, and a cubic and a half high. Overlay it with pure gold. Overlay it inside and out. And make upon it a gold molding round about, casting four, rings, uh, four gold rings for it to be attached to its four feet. Two rings on one side of its walls and two on the other. Make poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. Then insert the poles into the rings on the side of the ark for carrying the ark. And now as we're still in, really in the middle of our tour service still, um, at this high point in our service, our thoughts now turn to people who are not well. We offer these, uh, these really important prayers for their well-being and for their healing. I'm going to invite people to share names with us if you'd like, a, uh, if you'd like to do so, so that together we might all uh, think of them and offer prayers for them for healing. 
if anybody in the room first, then we'll go to those who are joining us online. If anybody in the room would like to share a name with us, somebody for healing, I invite you to raise your hand and I'll go around the room. Yeah. William and Max. Marjorie and Jackie. Rick, your brother. Max. And if anybody online would like to share a name with us, I invite you to do so. If you would just, um, if you're going to say the name out loud, I'd ask that you just unmute yourself first. If you prefer to type a name and put it in the chat box, you're welcome to do that as well. May his parents and you, Rabbi Holtz. Thank you, Jay. And may his parents be keeping our prayers for healing. Linda Wayman. Thank you. For those names that have been said, for those that are in our hearts, we say, May God, who bless our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, bless and heal all those who are in need. God, we ask that you bless them with a refuah shlema, a complete healing, a refuah ta nefesh, a healing of the spirit, a refuah ta guf, and a healing of the body. God, be with them, be with those who love them, and be with all those who provide care for them. Baruch atadonai rofeh holim. Blessed are you, God healer of the sick. Together we all say, Amen. We join now in song as we pray for their healing and well-being, led for us by Veronica. <laughs> May the source of strength, who blessed the ones before us, help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing, and let us say, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Mikor habracha le avoteinu. Bless those in need of healing with refua shalema. The renewal of body, the renewal of spirit, and let us say, Amen. Amen. We continue now with the Haftarah reading. Baruch Adonai, wait, no. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher bachar, vim v'im tovim, v'ratzav v'divrahem, hene et marim, Baruch Ata Adonai Haboher Batara Umoshe Avdo Uvisrael Amo Uvivie Haemet Bat Sadek. Amen. Vaya he to Vardonai of Slamo Lemor Habai Taze Asherata the owner Imtelech Bahukotai the Emish Patai Tase the Shamarta Ekomit Votai La Lechet Bachem Akimoti et Devari Itach Asher Debarti El Davidavicha 
Vishakanti Bene Bito Israel Velo Azo et Ami Israel. Amen. Then the word of the Eternal came to Solomon concerning this temple that you have been building. If you obey my statutes and carry out my rules of justice and take care to keep all of my commandments, I will fulfill my promise, the one I made to your father, David. And I will dwell among the people of Israel and never forsake my people, Israel. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Zor Koha Alamim Zadik Boho Hadarot Ha El Hane Eman Ha Omer Vose Hamdaber and Kailat Yem Shekol Devarav Emet Vad Sedek Al Torah Baal Ha Avoda Baal Hanviim Baal Yam Hashabat Hazel Shana Tatan Lanu, Adonai Eloheinu, Lik du Shavalim Nucha, Lichavod Oti Faret, Lechako Adonai Eloheinu, Anach Numodim Lach, Umbarchim Ota, Yitz Brach Shim Habafi Kochai, Tamid La Olam, Vaed, Baruch Rata Adonai, Mechadesha Shabbat. Amen. Yashikoach, Yashikoach, and Mazel Tov uh, on the beautiful Haftarah reading as well. Morgan, uh, Veronica's prepared something special to share with you and to share with all of us. Your Torah reading, your Haftarah, which you'll be explaining to us in a little bit, uh, was all about the construction of a sanctuary. Sanctuary in the wilderness, a portable one that the Israelites carried around with them, uh, a more permanent temple in Jerusalem that Solomon constructed. And so now Veronica's prepared a, a sanctuary song for us. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you and now with the hebrew same tune that you just heard in your torah portion Thank you so much. We continue now with prayers for the community, including a prayer for our congregation led for us by Donna and Ari Waller. I invite you to come to the Bima at this time. After that, uh, Eva Waller will be leading us in a prayer for our country. Eva, you're welcome to come on up as well, join your parents. And then after that, a prayer for the state of Israel, which will be led for us by Richard and Sarah Zakai. Source, source of all being, being. May, may the children of this community learn these passions from us. Love may we, love, love of Torah, Torah devotion and prayer, and support of the needy, may we guide with integrity, and may our leadership be in your service. May those who teach and nourish us be blessed with satisfaction, and may we appreciate their time and their devotion. Bless us with the fruits of wisdom and understanding, and may our efforts bring fulfillment and joy. Amen. Thank you.
O guardian of life and liberty, may our nation always merit your protection. Teach us to give thanks for what we have by sharing it with those who are in need. Keep our eyes open to the wonders of creation and alert to the care of the earth. May we never be lazy in the work of peace. May we honor, may we, may we honor those who have died in defense of our ideals. Grant our leaders wisdom and forbearance. May they govern with justice and compassion. Help us all to appreciate one another and to respect the many ways that we may serve you. May our homes be safe from affliction and strife and our country be sound in body and spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue now with a prayer for the state of Israel, led for us by Richard and Sarah Zakheim. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Great. Uh, o heavenly one, protector and redeemer of Israel, bless the state of Israel, which marks the dawning of hope for all who seek peace. Shield it beneath the wings of your love. Spread over it the canopy of your peace. Send your light and truth to all who lead and advise, guiding them with your good counsel. Establish peace in the land and fullness of joy for all who dwell there. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay, so we've been hearing the Torah being read. We heard the Haftarah being read beautifully, I might add. Um, but in terms of what we can do with it, what it means for us, uh, I mentioned before, Morgan has prepared a teaching for all of us on the Torah portion on the Haftarah. Morgan, please. Let's just lower that microphone a little bit for you. There you go. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining me on my journey. It has been very hard, especially since COVID started. To me, being Jewish means celebrating holidays, such as Rosh Hashanah, when we pass apples and honey around the table, and Passover, when we eat a big meal with grandparents. Becoming a bat mitzvah begins with leading a service and continuing for the rest of my life. When I go to friends or family B'nai Mitzvah services, I think to myself, one day I will go up to the podium and chant my Torah portion. Now that it has happened, I'm excited. I'm also excited for and committed to being Jewish for the rest of my life. The Torah portion that I have read is called Truma. The portion is about telling God, about telling, God telling Moses to tell the Israelite people to bring gifts. The Torah is about all of the gifts that God wants. Also, the people are to make a sanctuary out of the different rare items. After making the sanctuary, they're to make an ark to hold the Ten Commandments. There are two angels on the ark that almost make a throne which many, people, um, which many people say is where God sits. Why does God want gifts and why should people give them? That is a question that interests me because I wanna know the reasoning behind God's task for people giving gifts and why, why it is necessary. I look at people's responses to the question on the website, myjewishlearning.com, and from an article called Gifts Freely Given, by Rabbi Maynard W. Bell. One of his responses is that God is asking for gifts to make the tabernacle, to live among the Israelites. The Torah is telling the people to, give the tab to build the tabernacle, although the people do not have to give gifts if, um, to God if they don't want to, because then it would feel as if they're paying for God's presence. God's presence should be something that you want. By people voluntarily giving gifts to make the tabernacle, they're willingly inviting God to live, with, to live with them. Here is my response to the question, why does God ask for gifts and why it is necessary? Looking at, the, looking at answers such as Rabbi Bell's, I realize that you don't have to give gifts that you don't have to if you don't want to. It is totally optional because if it was mandatory, you're basically paying for God's presence. The reason for the voluntary gifts to build the tabernacle, 
people for God. Um, this is the Israelites willingly inviting God to live, live amongst them. Rabbi Maynard's article was very convincing right after I read it um, because I better un understood my Torah portion. The Haftorah talks about how, how Solomon had a lot of wisdom and used it to create a plan to construct the temple. Solomon wanted many people to help. When the temple was finished, Solomon was given a prophecy from God saying, if you obey my laws and carry out my rules of justice and take care of all of my commandments, I will fulfill my promise. The one that I made to your, God, to your father David and, the, and will dwell among the people of Israel and never forsake my people Israel. If King Solomon acts with justice to protect the Israelites, then God will be there for him, them. If not, even though they have built the temple, then it wouldn't be a real home for God. I would like to thank everyone who has helped me throughout my journey and being a part of my life. I'd like to thank my parents for always loving me, supporting me, and being there for me. I'm so grateful for everything they do for me, and they're the best parents ever. I would also like to thank Geveret Jeppin for teaching me Hebrew and working on my bat mitzvah with me, as well as Rabbi Holtz for working with me to make this speech and my bat mitzvah project. I'd like to thank my best friend, Eva Waller, for always being an amazing friend and always having my back. I loved hanging out with her every day until she moved away. I've missed her so much and I'm, I'm glad I've gotten to see her. I deeply appreciate the international um, Jewish community of Brussels for helping me with my Hebrew and Judaics before the coronavirus. Lastly, thank you all for coming to the synagogue and joining me on Zoom today. The Israelites journeyed from Egypt all the way to the promised land. It took 40 years longer than expected. Along the way, Israelites created a tabernacle in the wilderness so there would be holiness while traveling. Throughout their journey, they learned patience and perseverance. My journey was kind of similar to theirs because I also learned patience and to work hard to get to where I am right now. Thank you for joining me on my journey. Again, Yasher Koach and Mazel Tov. Wonderful speech and lesson for all of us, so important. I'd like to invite your parents now, Marla and James, to the Bima so that they can share a few words with us as well. Daddy and I are so proud of you and grateful for all of the joy that you bring to us. We are over the moon in love with you. Sometimes we look at you and we just smile and we're smiling because we know how blessed we are. From the moment you were born, you have made us ridiculously proud. We remember taking you to the mikveh in New York to bring you into Judaism and are overjoyed to see you here today as a bat mitzvah taking the next big step in your Jewish life. You have worked so hard in preparation for today. Listening to you practice and study brought us so much pleasure, especially because it didn't take any prompting from us. You were on it, pushing yourself forward. You were determined, self-reliant, organized, resilient, and patient as you learned and studied. Those are all qualities that shine brightly in you and have helped you become the beautiful young lady that you are today. Those same qualities will serve you well as you continue to grow and shine. Morgan, your love of animals is an example of your kind and gentle soul. We love your passion for horseback riding and seeing you feel so at home 
on a horse. We loved watching you learn to ski and cook and are amazed at your drawing and painting and artistic talent. We adore those goofy moments of silliness and laughter that we share with you. And when we see you smile and hear you laugh, it fills us with pure joy. We appreciate how responsible you have become, able to look after Joshua and walk him to the bus stop and how you seek to connect with him despite your age difference. We have enjoyed watching as you get to know your long lost Irish uncle, Phil Osophical, and the fun that you have with your cousins when we holiday together. We also love your more recently acquired interest in fashion and how you embrace European culture, jumping right into the wine tasting circuit. We admire your clear and strong values and how you stick to what you believe is right with confidence and conviction. You decided to become a vegetarian based on your moral code and have stuck to it with determination and dedication. You're a beautiful and valued friend to your friends, kind, generous, and loyal. All in all, you are an amazing young woman, smart, strategic, kind, compassionate, self-aware, perceptive, polite, beautiful inside and out. Not quite as important, but you also do an amazing Southern accent. We feel unbelievably grateful to be your mama and dada. We believe the greatest gift parents can give to their child is their time, their love, and their attention. I hope we give these all to you and that you truly feel loved. What we are trying to say is that you are everything we ever could have hoped for in a daughter. You have developed into a beautiful human being and it is you who gets the credit for that. For every step ahead in your life, we are at your side to support, to cheer you on, to watch you grow, looking on with love and pride. Okay, more wonderful words. Thank you very much, James and Marla. I'd like to invite forward now, Givert Treffen, your Hebrew teacher and tutor and much more as well to offer uh, some presentations and words on behalf of our congregation uh, this morning. Mazel tov, Morgan. It has been a pleasure meeting with you the past year and a half. It's been a year and a half. <laughs> with an ocean between us, you put in a lot of work and with a full commitment to your Hebrew studies. What I learned especially about you is two things. You have a wonderful soul, it's called the neshama in Hebrew, um, that comes straight from your heart. And you're one of the kindest people I have ever met. Please and thank you are natural for you. Those are one of my husband's and my main points of, of a person. And you, it comes natural. You don't have to ask you for it, it just comes. Um, which may seem basic, but it goes a long way in my book. These things will get you far in the successes I know that you're going to have in the future. We do have some gifts for you that I just pulled up. From the sisterhood, it's a pair of candlesticks. From the brotherhood, a kiddush cup. And from the congregation, it's a book called On the Doorpost of Your House with Prayers for at Home. Once again, mazel tov. I'm going to bring these down and hold them down. Thank you. Morgan, I remember a little over two years ago um, when your family announced that they were moving to Brussels from Roswell, uh, we were all pretty bummed out to see you and your family go. Um, but we were also excited when you reached back out to us and said, so here's what we're thinking. <laughs> um, that we've been able to kind of make 
keep our connection between you, your family, and our community, uh, even across an ocean. And certainly, um, if there was a silver lining to the pandemic, it was that you could fully participate over Zoom in the synagogue. Um, I don't think I've ever taught a religious school class where one student was in one continent, I was in another, the class was kind of all spread over, but it worked out perfectly well. I know that um, when we originally talked about what this bat mitzvah might look like and what the preparations for, we were sitting, what, at a diner, like uh, a mile that way. And we were talking about, how, this was before the pandemic, we were talking about how living in Europe and what a great opportunity it was, and you could travel all over the place and scrapbook about the, the Jewish sites that you saw all over Europe and, and history. And of course, then the pandemic came and traveling became rather difficult to do. And not only that, but we had to reschedule our date from February to, to now because uh, it would be much easier to, to travel and of course safer as well. And it reminded me of one of those uh, Yiddish folk sayings that says, people plan and God laughs. Um, the best laid plans. Two words that I heard regularly were patience and perseverance. And certainly you have embodied those um, incredibly well that the path, the journey that you took, just like you said about the Israelites, this was your point to, in your speech, just like the Israelites didn't expect a 40 year journey and they didn't expect to be in the wilderness for so long and they didn't know exactly when they would arrive, how they would arrive at the promised land at their destination, so too, um, your journey wasn't exactly predictable, um, but nonetheless, here you are um, doing an amazing job uh, helping to lead services, helping to retour, helping to teach all of us with your words and with your wisdom as well. Uh, one other thing that I want to uh, agree with um, that came from, certainly everybody knows you, uh, most recently your teacher, Kaveri Treffen, mentioned it, which is uh, how kind of a person you are, how nice of a person you are, uh, which goes beyond just remembering to say please and thank you, but actually embodying empathy and care and concern for other people, for your friends, for your classmates, uh, for the members of the community, and certainly for your family, especially your family as well. Uh, they have a lot to be proud of, your family, on this occasion, uh, both for what you were able to do today, but also for the person that you are becoming um, along the way. And that's what we're remembering and honoring and celebrating uh, as you become a bat mitzvah today. So let me also join with everyone and say congratulations, Mazel Tov and Yasher Koach. Morgan, I've got a few certificates for you, a few things. The first is, and we'll have to do some research on how you can use it, but uh, considering you live in Brussels, but it's a 250 US dollar gift certificate <laughs> uh, for travel to Israel on a peer group tour. Uh, which would be run by the Union for Reform Judaism and NIFTI. Um, this certificate's presented by them and by us as well. So as you uh, enter into high school, perhaps if you're interested in joining a North American tour of the state of Israel, uh, this will help you on your way. And the second one is something that you signed a few days ago at your rehearsal. This is your bat mitzvah certificate right here. Uh, for those with very good eyes, uh, you might notice that decorating the certificate are the stained glass windows of this sanctuary. You can't get the certificate anywhere else. It's homemade. It says, Bat Mitzvah Certificate, Te'udat Bat Mitzvah, Morgan Olivia Zakheim, Me'era Leba Bat Yaakov and Malka was called to the Torah as a Bat Mitzvah today, July 3rd, 2021, which corresponds to the 23rd day of the Hebrew month of Tammuz, 5,781, you read from the Torah scroll, the Torah portion was Truma, in the presence of Temple Kilat Chaim in Roswell, Georgia. In becoming a bat mitzvah, Morgan has accepted the privileges and responsibilities of being a Jew, lifelong Torah study and the keeping of mitzvot, Shabbat, holy day and life cycle observances, participation in the life of the synagogue, the Jewish community in Israel, and dedication to tikkun olam, improving our world. 
Morgan, you agree to all of that. We've got your signature right here. And just in case we kept the copy in the office, <laughs> um, but this original, it's going with you. Uh, mine is framed and hanging in my office now. Before I had an office, I kept it in my room. Uh, I encourage you to do the same. Get a frame for it before you leave the United States. It's hard to find a eight and a half by 11 frame in Brussels, but uh, get a frame, hang it up, uh, keep it. And every time you look at it, you can remember both the sanctuary, but also uh, the commitments and the significance of this day for you. I'll put this back in the envelope for you to take. Morgan, I'd also like to offer you a special blessing. This blessing comes from the Torah. It's words first offered by Aaron, Moses' brother, the first high priest of Israel. He offered it to that entire congregation of Israel, the ones who built the tabernacle, the sanctuary in the wilderness when they were en route to the promised land. Just as Aaron gave it to the entire congregation of Israel then, it's typically given to an entire congregation nowadays on a holiday or some other special occasion. But on this occasion, the occasion of you becoming a bat mitzvah, these are words I offer to you. I'd like to invite everyone to please rise as we open the ark. May God bless you and keep you. This is for me. May God enlighten you. May God be gracious to you. May God's face be lifted up to you. And may God grant you the blessing of peace. So may be God's will. Together we all say, Amen. I'd like to ask everyone to please remain standing. We return to the words of our service, and we continue now with Warner Scottish. Our thoughts, okay. our thoughts turn to those who have departed this earth, our own loved ones, those whom our friends and neighbors have lost, the martyrs of our people whose graves are unmarked, and those of every race and nation whose lives have been a blessing to humanity. As we remember them, we meditate on the meaning of love and loss, of life and death. This week, we remember Rita Hirschboxer, mother, mother-in-law, and grandmother of Debbie Dave and Josh Luchin, and Jean Caruso, Gerhard Schmidt, Jacqueline Strongen, Cheryl Goldberg Andrews, Sanford R. Fox, Ray Krinsky, Dorothy Gellinger, Jack Friedman, and Charles Witkin. If anyone else is remembering somebody who passed away either recently or at this time in years past, and you'd like to share their name with us, I invite you to do so, beginning first with people in the room at the sanctuary at TKC, if anyone would like to share a name. Alexander. And if anybody joining us over Zoom would like to share a name with us, I invite you to do so. Uh, if you would just unmute yourself first, please, before you speak. If you prefer, put it in the chat box. You're welcome to do that as well. Charlie Rothstein. Okay, we continue now with the words of the mourners' kaddish. Yitkadal v'yitkadash shemei raba v'alma divra chirute v'amlich malchute v'chayechon v'yomechon u'v'chaye dechol beit Yisrael v'agala u'vizman kariv v'imru amen. Yehe shemei raba mivarach. Lelam almei almaya, yit barach vishtabach vitpaar vitromam vitnaseh, 
Vitadar, Vitale, Vitalal, Shame de Kedesha, Drihu. Leela, Minko, Birhata, Vishirata, Tush Behata, Venechemata, Damiran, Belma, Bimru, Amen. Yehe, Shlama, Rabba, Min Shemaya, Behaim, Alenu, Velko Israel, the Imru, Amen. Please be seated. So it is Shabbat, and on Shabbat we have something called Kiddush. Kiddush means sanctification, which is a fancy way of saying we talk about how special Shabbat is. This is Kiddush. We begin with the song Vishamru, which Veronica is going to lead for us, and then we're going to continue with a symbol of our Shabbat joy, which is wine. Um, I guess it fits in well with that European culture you were talking about, James. Uh, and after that, motzi, uh, blessing over the challah, over the bread. Josh, if you would uh, join us up on the bima, please. Morgan's brother is going to help out with us. Please join in with Vishamru. Vishamru v'nei Israel et ha-shabbat. La so dead ha shabbat le doro tambu read o lam ve shamru vene israel et ha shabbat la so dead ha shabbat le doro tambu read o lam ve new vein vene israel vene israel Oh, he olam veshamru vene Israel et hashabat la sot et hashabat le doro tamburit olam ki sheshet yamim asadunai asadunai. Et Hasham Hayim, the Et Ha Aret, the Shamru, Bene Israel, Et Hashabat, La so Et Hashabat, the Doro Tamburit Olam. Uva Yomash Fi, Shabbat Vayna Fash, Shabbat Vayna Fash. Shavat Bagina Fash Veshamru Bene Israel Et Hashavat La Sot Et Hashavat Le Doro Tamburit Olam. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Borei Pri Hagafin. Amen. Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Hamotzi Lechemin Haaret. Amen. Amen. Okay. I'll be good. Should the whole time. <laughs> okay. Wonderful. Well, Stephen, well done, Morgan. We are all incredibly proud of you, and wonderful to see you here at our sanctuary again. So let's sing together, Simon Tov, Umazel Tov. Yeah, you're ready. Mom's ready. Simon Tov and Basel Tov and Basel Tov and Simon Tov. Simon Tov and Basel Tov and Basel Tov and Simon Tov. Simon Tov and Basel Tov and Basel Tov and Simon Tov. Yeah, hey, la, do. Yeah, hey, la, do. Yeah, hey, la, do. Who the whole is right here? Yeah, hey, la, do. Yeah, hey, la, do.
Well, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Yeah. <laughs>